I want to talk today about thin layer chromatography, or which is often abbreviated as TLC. It's a method of analyzing uh, comp the composition of a mixture to get some idea of the compounds making up that mixture. To keep in mind about TLC, a TLC plate contains a thin layer, usually silica or alumina, and that silica or alumina layer is bonded on some backing. When I was doing this in college, they used glass as the backing, which was probably the stupidest thing they could do because you had to cut it with a glass cutter and it would break and cut your hands and stuff. Nowadays, they use plastic, which looks, which works a lot better. If you want to see what a TLC plate looks like, something like this. This one has been cut to the right size for use from a bigger sheet. Um, there's a thin plastic backing, then a thin layer of silica in this case on the top this person is spotting it using a fancy spotting tool but that's basically what a thin layer chromatography plate looks like um, this material the silica or the alumina contains lots of polar binding sites they bind really well to polar molecules which means that the polar molecules stick tightly to these polar bonding sites and nonpolar molecules bind less tightly and that's how it separates compounds based on their polarity it holds onto the polar molecules more tightly and it allows the nonpolar ones to move more freely. So once this TLC plate is spotted, like this one is shown here, um, it is put in a chamber that has a solvent, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And the solvent runs up the plate by capillary action. As the solvent runs up the plate, the polar solvent molecules, if our solvent is polar enough, bind to the polar binding sites we talked about here. Since the solvent is binding to these polar binding sites, the molecules in our sample are kicked off the binding site and move up the plate. Nonpolar molecules are kicked off easier, so they move faster up the plate. This is the schematic of how the TLC experiment works. You can see I have a TLC plate that I spotted one, two, three, four, five different samples on, and then we take our spotted TLC plate and we put it in a TLC chamber. A lot of times this will be a beaker with a small amount of solvent down the bottom. Very important that the small amount of solvent on the bottom doesn't go past the top of these spots. So we let it sit in the solvent and capillary action pulls the solvent up the plate. You can see that it's running up the plate. So we let it run further and further and further until the solvent gets almost near the top of the plate. Then we stop it by removing the plate from the chamber. And what do we see? We see that um, some compounds are less polar, and the less polar compounds move towards the top of the plate, whereas some compounds are more polar and they barely move at all. And you can see the less polar compounds are these two, the more polar compounds are this one, and this one's kind of in the middle. Now, this TLC example is not exactly representing how we would normally do the experiment, because probably our TLC um, plate would have a couple of different features from this. First, let me show you what I mean by that. I'm done. Yes, I've altered the last lane on my TLC plate to make it a little bit more representative of what we might normally see in a TLC experiment. First, you can see that there are actually two spots in this lane. That means that th whatever I spotted here has two samples in it. It has some molecule number one and some molecule number two. I've labeled this as UK for our unknown sample. And what I'm doing is I'm comparing my unknown sample to the other possible identities. And what I see is that this spot runs really close to this one. And this spot runs really close to this one. So it's very likely that my unknown compound contains a mixture of this compound and this compound. And that's one of the ways that TLC is used to compare an unknown to some standards that we might have. Now, we'd really like to have a way to quantitate our spots on a TLC plate so we can sort of calculate values on one TLC plate and compare them to another. And the way that is done is by calculating something called the RF. The RF is a ratio of the distance that the solvent moves. So this is the solvent front, this is the starting point. Um, position to the distance the spot moves. So in this case, for this spot right here, my solvent moved a total of 11.5 centimeters from the so from the place where it was spotted. The spots were spotted, and my spot moved 8.5. So my RF would be 8.5 divided by 11.5 equals 0.74.
and we would similarly quantify all of these other spots and calculate their, their RFs as well. We also need to talk about how we're going to visualize the compounds, how we're going to see them. And what you kind of, if you look really close right here, what you'll notice is that the spots that this person is putting on the plate have no color. They don't absorb visible light. And that's the case for most of our organic compounds that we analyze by TLC. They can't, we can't see them by visible light. So we need to do something that allows us to see them. As I said, most of the compounds don't absorb visible light, but many of them do absorb UV light. So what I have here is a picture of these, this TLC plate and another one under a UV lamp. And what you can see is that the TLC plate has a fluorescent dye attached to it that fluoresces green. What happens is when my UV absorbing spot sits on top of that fluorescent green dye, it absorbs the UV light, so I can't see any fluorescence there. So anywhere I have a spot, I see a dark spot from the lack of fluorescence. So this lane has one, two, three spots in it. This one has one really broad spot on it. The compounds are absorbing the UV light and blocking the fluorescence. So what we're going to be doing in this lab is analyzing different pain relievers. And different pain, commercial pain, pain relievers contain different components. Some of the components pain relievers might have are aspirin, ibuprofen, acetaminophen. Some of them even have caffeine in them. Depending on the pain reliever you buy and use, it may have one or more of these in them. Since Midol is a mixture of acetaminophen and caffeine, whereas Excedrin actually has three things in it. It has aspirin, acetaminophen, and caffeine. So what's going to happen today is you're going to have an unknown compound. Your unknown compound is going to be one of these six possible pain relievers. And using the data from a TLC experiment, you're going to identify which um, unknown pain reliever you have. So what we're going to do in analyzing our pain relievers is we're going to spot all four of them, one, two, three, four possible components across the bottom. And then this fifth lane is our unknown. And we're going to analyze them. And what we're going to do is we're going to analyze them in three different solvents. And what we, we do this because choosing the correct solvent is a really tricky thing. And what I want to point out to you is that if my solvent is too polar, it's going to pull everything all the way up to the solvent front and I won't see any difference between my spots. If my solvent's not polar enough, I will see it only moving a little bit and I still won't see any difference between my spots. But if my solvent is just right, I'll move them some of the way so they'll be away from the spotting line but not all the way to the solvent front. And that's what we're looking for, kind of that Goldilocks solvent. Not too polar, not too nonpolar, just right. So that's one of the things you're going to analyze in this experiment too. Not only trying to figure out what compounds your unknown has, but and to identify your pain reliever, but also which solvent is the best one. So those are the two things that we're interested in in this experiment.